there welcome or welcome back to my channel hissy books i'm camilla and today i'm reacting to yet again another long list so this is book prize time it appears so even this week has been two prizes so there'll be another video coming out soon as well with another prize um i think it's just really fun to follow these prizes to put books on our radars and on our tbrs and just see you know what's up and coming what's being rewarded and just find new voices or new to us anyway in this video i'm diving into the international booker prize which announced its long list last week i am so excited by this because last year the first time i followed the prize and gosh, the long list was so impressive and amazing and I was falling all over if you saw my video. So I was really excited about diving into this list. But I have to say that my first impression was underwhelmed. And I think it has mostly to do with the covers. So, you know, my you know first look at the list, I was like, oh, okay. I don't know. The covers just weren't that appealing to me. And I'm very much of a judge a book by its cover, literally. Um, now it doesn't always much obviously but you know sometimes that first kind of look means a lot and I'm just not getting it from this list. My second impression though was that the list was very diverse especially in terms of language and kind of countries that these are from. I have to say I find the list quite European so I think something like 60 or over 60% of the list is European. I mean, I don't know, I'm a bit less impressed by that. But that said, like, I'm just not that invested in aware of, you know, translated fiction world. So I don't know everything that's out. Maybe this is a good representation. But I think there's actually three authors from Asia, one author from Africa and one author from Latin America and everyone else is European. Although technically one of the French authors is technically from the Caribbean because um, the author is from Guadeloupe, which is a French territory in the Caribbean. Anyway, let's dive into the books because as I said, these were just impressions. I had never heard about any of these books or authors before. So I haven't looked into what these books are actually about. We're gonna do that together right now and see if I'm adding any of them to my TBR. First on the list was Boulder by Eva Baltasar, who is from Spain. And this work was translated by Julia Sanchez. The blurb on the Booker website says, Eva Baltasar demonstrates her preeminence as a chronicler of queer voices navigating a hostile world in prose as brittle and beautiful as an ancient saga. Working as a cook on a merchant ship, a woman comes to know and love Samsa, who gives her the nickname Boulder. When the couple decides to move to Reykjavik together, Samsa announces that she wants to have a child. She's already 40 and can't bear to let the opportunity pass her. Boulder is less enthused, but doesn't know how to say no, and so finds herself dragged along in a journey that feels as thankless as it is alien. With the motherhood changing Samsa into a stranger, Boulder must decide where her priorities lie and whether her yearning for freedom will trump her yearning for love. Oh, that's actually very intriguing. I'm not gonna lie, yeah, I wasn't totally in with the whole smoking <laughs> cover, but uh, this is really intriguing of, you know, the whole aspect uh, yeah, of queer motherhood and just the relationship. Also, them moving to Reykjavik. I always have a little interest for stuff in Iceland. So yeah, actually sounds quite good. Next we have Whale by Chon Myon Kwan and that was translated by Chi Yong Kim and this is from South Korea. The blurb says an adventurous satire of epic proportions which sheds a new light on the changes Korea experienced in its rapid transition from pre-modern to post-modern society. Set in a remote village in South Korea, Whale follows the lives of three linked characters Gumbok, an extremely ambitious woman who has been chasing an indescribable thrill ever since she first saw her whale crest in the ocean. Her new daughter, Chun Hu, who communicates with elephants, and a one-eyed woman who controls honeybees with a whistle. A fiction that brims with surprise and wicked humor from one of the most original voices in South Korea. Ooh, okay, I'm into this as well. I mean, the cover was weird. Because it looks like a cinema. So I, I don't see a link to a cinema at all in the blur. So I look forward to potentially seeing the, what the link is there. But I think it's another one that I would definitely add to my TBR. Okay, this is changing my mind. I love it. 
Oh, books, the beauty of books. Next we have one that was kind of appealing to me, even though it's a bit bland, but I thought it was a bit less bland than the other ones. So it's The Gospel According to the New World by Marie Condé. And this was translated by her husband, Richard Philcox. So um, this is the author I mentioned, who's from uh, Guadeloupe, which is a French territory island in the uh, Caribbean. So it says, a miracle baby is rumored to be the child of God. Award-winning Caribbean author Marie Scandé follows his journey in search of his origins and mission. Baby Pascal is strikingly beautiful, brown in complexion, with grey-green eyes like the sea. But where does he come from? Is he really the child of God? So does the rumor and many signs throughout his life will cause his theory to gain ground. From journey to journey and from one community to another, Pascal sets off in search of his origins, trying to understand the meaning of his mission. Will he be able to change the fate of humanity? And what will the new world gospel reveal? So I'm not really into the whole religion thing. However, this is really appealing to me and I just really want to read more from authors in the Caribbean. So really, if I need an excuse, that's, that's it. I would probably look for it in French. I'm, tr I'm guessing it's translated from the French. So I probably wouldn't read the translation. Next, we have Standing Heavy by Gauss. That's what I want to say it's pronounced. Um, uh, he's an author from the Ivory Coast. And this was translated by Frank Wynne. So the blurb says, A unique insight into everything that passes under a security guard's gaze, which also serves as a searingly witty deconstruction of colonial legacies and capitalist consumption. I'm already sold. <laughs> Amidst the political bickering of the inhabitants of the residence for students from Côte d'Ivoire and the ever-changing landscape of French immigration policy, two generations of Ivoirians attempt to make their way as undocumented war workers, taking shifts as security guards at a flour mill. The sharply satirical yet poignant tale draws on the author's own experience as an undocumented student in Paris. Okay, so this sounds like it's also translated from the French, so I would probably look for it in French as well. Uh, but it sounds really, really good. This sounds exactly like the kind of book that I love to read. I love a story of refugee. I love just some like a transnationalism tale. And also, again, I want to read more authors from African uh, countries that I have not read from before. So, you know, this sounds like a really great opportunity. Next, we have Time Shelter by Georgi Gospodinov from Bulgaria. And this was translated by Andrew Bredow. In the blurb, they talk about a clinic for the past offers a promising treatment for Alzheimer's sufferers. Each floor reproduces a decade in minute detail. Minute, sorry, wrong, <laughs> wrong uh, way to pronounce that word. Transporting patients back in time. An unnamed narrator is tasked with collecting the flotsam and jetsam of the past, from 1960s furniture and 1940s shirt buttons to scents, and even afternoon light. But as the rooms become more convincing, an increasing number of healthy people seek out the clinic as a time shelter, hoping to escape the horrors of modern life. A development that results in an unexpected conundrum when the past begins to invade the present. Intricately crafted and eloquently translated by Angela Rodell, Time Shelter cements Georgi Gospodinov's reputation as one of the indispensable writers of our times and a major voice in international literature. Again, that sounds so good. Um, yeah, it sounds really interesting. Okay, what next? What else? Okay, next is Is Mother Dead a Novel by Vigdis Hjort. I think this is an author from Norway. So, to mother is to murder, or close enough, thinks Johanna as she looks at the spelling of the two words in Norwegian. Oh, I didn't actually say it. It was translated by Charlotte Barslund. So the actual blurb is, recently widowed, Johanna is back in Oslo after a long absence to prepare for a retrospective of her art. The subject of her work is motherhood and some of her more controversial paintings have brought about a dramatic rift between parent and child. This new proximity after decades of acrimonious absence set both women on edge. Before too long, Johanna finds her mother stalking her thoughts and herself stalking her mother's house. That's so interesting because I thought she would have been the mother in that situation and she was kind of talking about her child so it's interesting that it's kind of the other way about uh with her own mother uh yeah this sounds really interesting this sounds like a typical prize <laughs> kind of 
storyline. Anyway, it sounds nice. I think I would definitely read it. I don't know if it would be top of my list right now, but sounds good. Next, we have Jimi Hendrix Live in Le View by Andrei Kirkov from Ukraine. And this was translated by Ruben Awoli. This was a cover that I was like, oh, that kind of, it stood out for me, but also super obviously from Ukraine. I guess we've all seen that flag, uh, especially in the last year, unfortunately. All right, I'm kind of really interested by kind of like a sort of magical realism, or like, you know, a change timeline. I'm always really up for that. So let's see what this says. Shot through with Kirchhoff's unique brand of black humor and vodka fueled magical magic realism, Jimi Hendrix Live in Lvov is an affectionate portrait of one of the world's most intriguing cities. Hmm. Strange things are afoot in the cosmopolitan city of Lvov, Western Ukraine. I feel like I'm hoping I'm continuing to say that correctly. I looked it up. <laughs> Seagulls are circling and the air smells salty. Though Lvov... <laughs> I'm definitely going to start saying it wrong, I'm sorry. It's a long way from the sea. A ragtag group gathers around a mysterious grave in Litchakiv Cemetery, among them an ex-KGB officer and an aging hippie he used to spy on. Before long, Captain Ryab Tsev and Alik Olisevich team up to discover the source of the anomalies. Meanwhile, Taras, who makes a living driving kidney stone patients over cobblestone in his ancient Opel Vectra is courting Darka, who works nights at a bureau de change, God. despite being allergic to money. The young lovers don't know it, but their fate depends on two lonely old men, relics of another era who will stop at nothing to save their city. Okay, that blurb made little zero sense to me, uh, mostly because there's so many names that I don't like when blurbs do that. I don't know the characters yet. Don't try to introduce them to me now. Also, the, the use of bureau de change always kills me. Anyway, that said, this book sounds interesting from the premise. The blurb here is kind of putting me off, actually. Uh, mostly because I'm like, what's actually going on? But I would definitely give it a try. Next, we have The Birthday Party by Laurent Mauvigny uh, from France. And this was translated by Daniel Levin Becker. So another one translated from French. Actually, there's quite a lot now that I'm realizing. <laughs> This gripping tale of the violent er eruptions of the past into the present from a major contemporary French writer is a deft unraveling of the stories we hide from others and from ourselves. Buried deep in rural France, little remains of the isolated hamlet of three lone girls, save a few houses and a curiously assembled quartet. Patrice Bergogne, inheritor of his family's farm, his wife Marion, their daughter Aida, and their neighbor Christine, an artist. While Patrice plans a surprise for his wife's 40th birthday, inexplicable events start to disrupt the Hamlet's quiet existence, anonymous menacing letters, an unfamiliar car rolling up the driveway, and as night falls, strangers stalk the houses, unleashing a nightmarish chain of events. Hmm, this is giving me cursed bread vibe. I've just finished that. This is also giving me, uh, what's that movie from Jordan Peele? Us vibe as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm totally into it, I have to say. Uh, it sounds like a bit like horror-ish in that way, but I don't know. Anyway, next one. Next is While We Were Dreaming by Clemens Meyer from Germany, and this was translated by Kathy Darbyshire. Startlingly raw and deeply moving, this extraordinarily debut novel from one of Germany's most ambitious writers is full of passion, hope, and despair. Rico, Mark, Paul, and Danielle were 13 when the Berlin Wall fell in Austin, 1989. Growing up in Leipzig at the time of reunification, they dream of a better life somewhere beyond the brewery quarter. Every night they roam the streets, partying, rioting, running away from their fears, their parents and the future, fighting to exist, killing time. They drink, steal cars, feel wrecked, play cool, longing for real love and true freedom. I'm not gonna lie, this does not appeal to me. This sounds like a, I'm sure it's not, but what it sounds to me is like a boys will be boys kind of situation, and I'm not into that. All right, next. Oh, finally an interesting cover. Pyre by Perumal Murugan from India, and this was translated by Anirudan Vasudevan. I apologize if I mispronounced that. Um, young love is pitted against social discrimination and Perumal Murugan's powerful and compelling novel set in the rural Tamil Nadu of 1980s. Soroja and Kumaseran are in love and in danger. 
After a whirlwind romance, they marry in a small southern Indian town before returning to Kumarasan's family village. But the newlyweds are harboring a dangerous secret. They belong to different castes, and if the villagers find out, they will be in grave peril. Faced with venom from her mother-in-law and painted questions from her new neighbors, Soraja struggles to adjust to a lonely and uncomfortable life. Kumarasan throws himself into building a business, hoping to scrape together enough money for them to start over somewhere new. But as vicious whispers encircle the couple, will their love be enough to keep them safe? Oh, that sounds heartbreaking, actually. Sounds really interesting, but heartbreaking in a way that I don't know if I have it in me to read, especially right now. <sighs> All right, next, we only have three to go. Uh, this is Stillborn by Guadalupe Nethel from Mexico, and it was translated by Rosalind Harvey. Guadalupe Nettles' gripping and insightful fourth novel explores one of the life's most consequential decisions, whether or not to have children. Alina and Laura are independent and career-driven women in their mid-thirties, neither of whom have built their future around the prospect of a family. Laura has taken a drastic decision to be sterilized, but as time goes by, Alina becomes drawn to the idea of becoming a mother. When complications arrive in Alina's pregnancy and Laura becomes attached to her neighbor's son, both women are forced to reckon with the complexity of their emotions. In Nettles' sensitive and surgically precise exploration of maternal ambivalence. So I'm unclear here if they're a couple or not, uh, which I feel like I, it'll be nice to know. Uh, it's also giving me a little bit of the vibe of the Norwegian book about motherhood. Clearly you have an interesting um, theme. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested by it, but also I would like to know a bit more before adding this one to my TBR, I think. Next, we have A System So Magnificent It Is Blinding by Amanda Svensson from Sweden. And this is the only cover that was like striking to me, but it also looked like contemporary fiction and not literary fiction to me. But anyway, uh, and it was translated by uh, Nicholas Malley. This joyful family saga about free will, forgiveness and interconnections poses a question. Are we free to create our own destinies or are we just part of a system beyond our control? In October 1989, a set of triplets is born, and it is at this moment their father chooses to reveal his affair. Pandemonium ensues. Over two decades later, Sebastian is recruited to join a mysterious organization, where he meets Laura Kedinsky, a patient whose inability to see the world in three dimensions is not the only intriguing thing about her. Meanwhile, Clara has traveled to Easter Island to join a doomsday cult, and the Third triplet, Matilda, is in Sweden trying to escape from the color blue. <laughs> I feel like it was boring to begin with, and now I'm like, oh. <laughs> then something happens that forces the triplets to reunite. Their mother calls with worrying news. Their father has gone missing, and she has something to tell them. A 25-year secret that will change all their lives. Okay, yeah, I'm interested by this one. Definitely. And finally, we have a book by an author from China. It is Ninth Building by Zhou Jingzi and translated by Jeremy Tang. A fascinating collection of vignettes based on the author's life in China during the Cultural Revolution. Revisiting his experience as a boy in Beijing and then as a teenager exiled to the countryside, Zhu captures a side of the Cultural Re Revolution that is seldom talked about. The sheer tedium and waste of young life under the regime, as well as the gallows humor that accompanies such desperate situation. Uh, kind of very succinct blurb here and it seems to be a... Well, it says collection of vignettes, so I don't know if it's short stories. It says it's based on his life. So is it non-fiction? Like, I'm, I'm a little bit... <laughs> I have questions, please. But I'm very interested. I read some books from China last year and I was... I had, was it last year? No, it was 2021. Ugh, the years are flying by. Uh, where I pick specific month to read from and China had been one of those countries and I was really interested to learn more about it so this would be really nice to read as well. So yeah, I think most of them I would add to my TBR. I don't know that there's any of them that I'm like, oh my god, I must read this. So this isn't quite like last year. Last year there, I, I bought so many of the books on the list. I don't know if I would go out and buy some of these. Not yet anyway, I will maybe wait for some of them to get more reviews, get what you know people think, that'd be nice. So what have you thought about this long list? You know, have you read any of this book? Have you heard of any of the authors? 
Are you preparing yourself to read a long list? Let me know of your plans and of your thoughts on any of these books. I would love to know. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you back. Bye.